Hello and welcome to the next tutorial. Today you'll be making these pencil holders and as you can see, this is going to be one of the hardest tutorials you have ever done. So start crying right now. Just kidding, this is actually going to be pretty easy, so let's get started. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a new design right there. I clicked on the blue button. Now the reason I'm starting with brand new design is because we're dealing with a lot of shapes and if you've ever used Tinkercad before, when you have a lot of shapes inside of the program, it tends to stall. We don't want that. Let's get started with a cylinder. Now for my students, I'm going to expect you to do one of the ones I'm going to show you and then create one of your own. Because I want to see what kind of uh, stuff you make. I'm going to put this at 40. Oops wrong direction. I want the sides to be about 40 and 40. And let's go ahead and make that, uh, I don't know, let's say three. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Sure. Let's keep it there. See, here's the thing. We're going to have in my class, at least a limit as to how, how tall we want these to be. So I'm going to get another cylinder. That way you can get an idea of what I'm looking for. Let's say 70 is your max, okay? Because uh, obviously we have printer restrictions and all these other things, but let's keep it at 70 because I don't want you to make this huge giant cup. It's gonna be weird. And based on that, let's change this. I know, I changed my mind. Let's make it 50 by 50 and that'll be, that'll be the last mistake I ever make in front of you, I know. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by decorating this thing. So here's what I did last time. Made one of these. This is a, what do they call these things? A tube. I'm gonna make this also 50 by 50. <laughs> I just moved it and that's what it gave me that number. Ew, okay, two mistakes. I'm gonna change the sides on these because I don't like it to be flat like that. The wall thickness, let's make that a one. All right, that's not bad. And the height. Ooh, let's, yeah, that seems like a big height there. Let's, let me think, let me think, let me think. I don't like 10. Whoa, I, I didn't realize it was that much. Three. Let's stay with three for right now. And uh, let's change the color. That way we can see the difference between the base and the outer ring. All right, we're going to want this to go up. So let's just move it up by one, two, three. All right, and let's just make sure it's aligned by selecting both. I'm gonna click on the letter L to make sure I align it here and there. And it looks like we're good. Okay, so they're aligned, great. And now we're gonna bring a sphere. I'm going to increase the sides and I'm gonna shrink this. I'm gonna hit the shift button, I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna shrink it to about, I think three, just because we made this three, so. Eek. All right, fine. We need to zoom in on this because that is way too small to move around. See how easy it picks up all the other ones? Let's see if I can click there. All right. So I'm going to move this to three and then move it up three. Now it fits there. I actually don't like the way it looks because what we're going to do is we're going to be stacking this thing up and I want there to be some overlap. So I want it to be bigger than that ring. I'm going to hit shift. I'm going to hold the shift button. I'm going to go four. Let's say five. Okay, very important. Let's align these things, and but we're only gonna align it, by the way, I'm gonna select everything, including the sphere. I'm gonna, only gonna align it in one side, right there. Now I know it is perfectly in that direction. If I were to hit this button, it would go right to the center. I don't want that. Now, here's the other thing, and you should pay attention to this because you do not want this to be lopsided. Well, maybe you do, but it's not gonna look good at the very end, so I'm gonna Move it back. Oh, that's too much. I'm going to change my snap grid, which is usually behind my little animation character here. All right. That, I want this to be centered between these two rings. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to click the top. That way it gives me the top view, focused, top. There you go. This looks about right. I see this square is pretty close between these two. I'm going to say that's good. Now I'm going to duplicate the sphere. Control D. You can click this one if you like. 
and I'm just going to hit the shift button one time or hold it. That way it lets me go straight up without moving it left or right. And then I'm going to try to center it here. So I'm going to click. I'm going to focus so I can see what's here. And that looks pretty good. All right. Essentially, we've done the hard part for this video. Seriously, we're almost done. So I'm going to click. I'm going to click this one, the outer ring, the orange one, and then this one. And please pay attention to this next part. This is the part that makes the awesomeness happen. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to lift it one millimeter. Watch, there's going to be a little, there, there's a little box. I'll move it up one. There's one. And now I'm going to rotate it. See this right here at the bottom? I'm going to move that over one. You can't really see it. I'm going to move it over one. There. Now, see how I didn't click anywhere else? I had that selected the whole time. That means now I can hit this button and it should do the rest for me. Now, the reason I have this here is to tell me when I should stop. So. Now you're saying that does not look like what we did before. You're correct. But this is one that I want you to turn into me saying, hey, I did this. Yeah, very nice. But I also want you to create your own. I'm going to show you another, another thing that you can do. Same exact process. I pick a shape. I'm going to make this, I'm going to shrink it first. Um, I'm going to hit the sh shift and hold button. And it's only telling me the outside, the top number. I want the side views, 56 and 48. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit. Now, mind you, the numbers aren't as important because, you know, we're not aiming for anything in particular. But the thickness, I'm going to keep that at a three. Now, very important part here. If you were to shrink this up and down and hold the shift button, and then all of a sudden you decide, you know what? I just want to change the height. You need to click away first and then click back. Otherwise, it's still thinking that maybe it wants all the sides and the, and the numbers to shrink by the same amount. I don't. And I forgot to check what the size was. 58 and what? 50? Kind of big, but I'm okay with this. Now, <clears throat> now, I used a sphere last time. If I wanted to, I could use, I don't know, what else could I use here that's kind of interesting? I'll use a little tiny cylinder. Again, I have no idea. I'm just making these things up. But instead of, um, you know, this, the having it on just two sides, I'm going to try to make this go on every single corner. And I'm going to zoom in here with the letter F. And then I'll move, move this. I want this to be aligned. Now, the thing is, it's very important that these things are aligned to the center because... If you don't do that, you're going to see a flaw in your design when you start rotating it. All right, so I'm gonna duplicate this one and move it to the other side. And I'm gonna turn this around so I can see what's going on over there and see, whoa, that is amazing. Okay, but it's still getting in my way. Let me focus there. All right, now I'm gonna move it with the arrow key. I'm gonna move this forward a little bit. All right, there it is. Now. I know some of you have seen this in code blocks, but some students would rather just do this on Tinkercad. That's fine. Not, not an issue because it's still cool, cool to know that Tinkercad can do this. And I'm not sure. I duplicated it, by the way. I selected both and duplicated it, and then it did this. I'm going to hit delete, and I'm going to hit duplicate again. When I do that, Tinkercad realizes, oh, um, you don't want to follow the pattern. I don't. I just wanted a copy to be in the exact same place. So I'm going to rotate this and I'm there. That's what I'm looking for. That little blue line. Now, mind you, I'm going to change this because I don't like that the little blue line is not at the center. And I'm just trying to get at that edge. That's what I want right there. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to hit this button to get me close up and I'm going to rotate it. because I want to see this again, not at the center. I'm going to move it over a little bit. All right. So I'm going to, Select both of them, control D, and I'm going to rotate them. Oops, went too much, right? All right. 
All right, let me zoom in here. I'm going to select that one, click the letter F, and it gets me really close. Uh, it's not bad. I'm using the arrow keys to move around because it's just so much easier to do it that way. And this one, I don't see that little blue line, so I'm going to go over here. Whoa, that's too much. That's better. All right. Where that thing keeps coming out of nowhere. So here's what I'm going to do now. I have my base set up. So now, hmm, check this out. Look, I'm going to do this without, I get, I need to make a hole, you know, some sort of thing that makes a hole in this one. Cause I was about to just do the whole thing over and over again, but that doesn't create a cup. It actually creates a solid object. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to duplicate this and then move it up one. Does it have to be one? No, it, it does when you're copying my model, but when you're creating your own, feel free to change the variation. I'm gonna rotate it one. Does it have to be? No, it could be more than one. It could be two, three. Okay, so I did this, but check this out. I did make a hollow space, and what's gonna happen is it's just gonna create a solid block of this thing. It doesn't actually create a cup because there's no hole in the middle. So, while it looks cool, it's not what we want. So I'm gonna undo that. Wow, that looks amazing. And one more time. Okay, so let's create the center hole. How do we do this? I'm gonna duplicate just the center one. I'm gonna hit Control D. I'm gonna move it up three. Oh, 2.5 here. Okay, so now I'm gonna duplicate it again. I'm gonna move this up. Now I'm gonna hold the Shift button and move this down. Actually, let me see what number it was. It's at three, so I want it to be, let's say two. So I'm gonna move this down until I get the two. Two, 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 two. That looks way too small. I don't know about you, I'm gonna move it back up. Whoa. And then I'm gonna make it a hole and I'm gonna see what it looks like because this determines the thickness of my wall and I really don't want a thick wall here. So I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna increase it by holding shift and moving it up a little bit. Mm, just a little bit more, too much, too much. I'm gonna click here and just put 2.9 and see what that looks like. I am happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna click away. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna stretch it up. Now I'm gonna move it down so it pierces this second um, shape. Now I'm gonna group these two, this one and this one. And then I'm gonna hit Control G, or you could just group it with that button, and now it's made the outer wall that I, I want. Now it's time to do the fun part. Clicking on the outer wall, now and each one of these cylinders. And then I'm going to duplicate, raise it up. This time I'll just do 0 0.5, yeah, 0 0.5. And I'm gonna rotate it, how much should I rotate it by? Two? I think it's two, and what does that say? I think it was two actually. All right, so now I'm just gonna duplicate, Control D. Ah, uh, you see what happened? Too much information, Tinkercad's load, like no way, too much, too much. So I'm gonna start again. And you know what I'm gonna do this time just to make sure that doesn't happen again? Is I'm going to select the outer wall, click on each one of these cylinders because I don't want that to happen again. Oh, I actually clicked the outer wall. I'm gonna group them first. So it creates one object. And I do want them to have the multicolor. All right, we're good. So now I'm gonna duplicate this thing, Control D. I'm gonna move it up 0.5 and then I'm gonna rotate it. One, two. Now I'm gonna hit, uh, I'll just click here. That way you can see what I'm doing. You see that? I'm going to keep on going. It looks cool and it looks complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. Now, some ideas for when you are making your own. Maybe instead of having these walls, you just put little spheres all the way around and you just rotate all of them. Now, that could be scary because I have a feeling this program might just slow down and maybe even stop if you put that many shapes on here. But hey, why not? Again, we wanna re reach 70. If you wanted to save all of this, just this one right here, 
and export it. I think you might be able to get to 70 in your slicer program. That's possible too. I'm just going to keep on going. Let's hope that it doesn't break. All right, that looks pretty good. There you go. Now you can use any of these shapes, just make sure they're flat. And then you have a second one that has a wall or you could just make a series of shapes on the outside and then just keep on rotating them up and over. In my class, again, I expect you to follow one of these to turn in and then make your own out of your own shapes, your own sizes. Again, this is not that hard, but it looks super cool. All right. Have a good day and enjoy playing with Tinkercad.